Thomas, Representative Fleming, he could come and talk about an important topic for him also is Safe Kentucky, which is mental health care for first responders. If you'd like to come forward, and I think Dr. Martha Mather and, and Rachel Lusinski are here as well. Or I guess, I guess Ms. Lusinski might be remotely. Is that correct? She's yep. in remotely. But if you'd like to come to the table, uh, introduce yourselves. I've allotted 10 minutes for testimony on this topic. You can introduce yourselves and begin your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is not about tea leaves or anything along those lines. So hopefully this will be a enlightening discussion. But I wish I, think, I really think it's more of maybe a life-saving discussion that we'll have uh, with you. I just want to express my appreciation uh, for coming and testifying uh, before you today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce my my guest, Martha, and then I'll have Rachel, who's online, and she'll introduce herself as well. Hi, Martha Mather. I should I should uh, correct that I'm not a doctor, uh, but I am very enthusiastic about all the mental health talk today. Uh, I'm the CEO of U of a Health Peace Hospital in Louisville. Rachel? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the chance to be here today. My name is Rachel Lusinski, and I'm the Director of Community Crisis Services at the University of Utah Health. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, uh, Martha. What we are we're here today basically to present uh, to you all uh, a tool called Safe Kentucky. Uh, it's a one click away app for K through 12 students, teachers and, and uh, parents to have 24 seven access that will serve two purposes. The first purpose is to have access to a mental health professional uh, that will provide some uh, life saving intervention services. And then two, it provide a report for school and, and safety concerns. Um, some time ago, I, uh, I reached out um, to Utah, and they were very, very helpful and gave me a very good understanding of what Safe UT, which this product or so this service is modeled after, of, after of. And we had our meeting uh, early January, and uh, um, Martha was kind enough to attend, and she's been on board ever since. And so she's basically going to be the uh, the backbone to get this product uh, up and running. Um, in a in a nutshell. Uh, we're looking at doing a pilot project uh, with some schools. We had a meeting with the Commissioner of uh, the Department of Education uh, today. He's enthusiastically um, uh, excited about this. We've talked to several school districts. They're really considering by doing this. Once again, it's going to be a pilot project and hopefully have it fully uh, implemented, uh, hopefully uh, sometime next year, which I'll introduce a bill and then also some funding mechanism. What I'd like to have Martha to do is give sort of a little details about that and then have Rachel give what her experience experiences have been and uh, some of the information she's come across. Thank you, Representative Fleming, and thank you to the committee for having us today. The Safe KY app is a wonderful opportunity for our communities to offer short-term behavioral health crisis intervention to students, their families, and educators 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at no cost to the user. Uh, we would have claim, uh, I'm sorry, licensed clinicians trained to build quick rapport with individuals using therapeutic interventions. This could be through talk, text, or chat. And as Representative Fleming mentioned, there's also a school safety feature where concerns of potential violence can be reported. And now more than ever, uh, Senator Owens mentioned earlier that following a global pandemic, we need to ensure access to behavioral health care which this initiative will offer. It's important for everyone, especially our kids, to know that they're not alone and that behavioral health challenges are, are very, very common. Um, so we've been working, I've been working closely with Rachel and her team at Safe KY. Uh, Utah rolled this out about seven years ago and they've had some very successful outcomes. Um, it took them about seven years to get to the entire state of Utah. So Representative Fleming mentioned that we would want to pilot this in a couple of school districts uh, first. As Rachel mentioned, she is the Director of Community Crisis Intervention and Support Services at the Huntsman Mental Health Institute at the University of Utah. And Rachel, thank you for being here today to share some of the outcomes with the committee. It's absolutely my pleasure. Um, like Martha and Representative Fleming have mentioned, Safe UT was born out of legislation in the 2015 general session in Utah, and it was created to address a crisis um, that was affecting the state of Utah, where suicide is the leading cause of death for youth in our state, ages 10 to 25, uh, ages 10 to 24 years old. We also know that uh, school safety concerns, such as planned school attacks or threats of violence, are closely correlated with underlying mental health challenges or unresolved behavioral health issues. And so, what Safe UT provides and what this model for Kentucky could look like is 24-7 life-saving access to master's level mental health professionals 
who can quickly build rapport, de-escalate crisis situations, and have really positive outcomes. What we've seen in Utah, last year we had more than 30,000 chats that were submitted with more than 1,000, or excuse me, more than 1 million back and forth message interactions with users. We know that students are always on their smartphones, and so this is a wonderful way to meet youth where they're at increase access to these services and reduce stigma around health seeking behavior. We had more than 298 life saving interventions for students that were uh, at imminent risk of attempting suicide. So that's almost 300 students in Utah that are still with us today because of the services and safety. When we look at the school safety or school tip feature, um, we see that the leading tip that submitted far and away is concerns of suicide. But our second tip that's submitted is about bullying and then uh, subsequently potential school threats or acts of violence. So in the 2020 to 2021 school year, we had um, 256 planned school attacks or potential threats of violence that were reported and prevented from taking place because of the collaboration with our mental health professionals, school administrators, and law enforcement officials um, when it's necessary. So um, we have more than 850 thousand students in the state of Utah with access to the app. That's almost 95% uh, of our public schools, 90% of all of our schools in the state that over the last seven years have um, opted in and chosen to be part of this incredible collaboration and life-saving service. We're happy to answer um, any questions and, and really um, commend the incredible work of Martha and her team and, and Representative Fleming on addressing mental health and school safety concerns in Kentucky. Thank you all very much. I, I'm impressed. It's 256 that I was just commenting. Um, that's, that's an eye-catching amount of things that were thwarted potentially. That's obviously in the, today's environment and what we're seeing nationally um, is tremendous. So I appreciate that. Um, any other comments from you all? If not, if there's any questions or comments, Representative Bentley? I have a question. Four years ago, I had the same bill and I used President uh, uh, Bickers from Utah, who's a good friend of mine, and we brought it up, and the state of Kentucky wouldn't supply the money. Remember that, Kim? Or any support. Have you already talked to the cabinet or any of them to get support? Uh, thank you, Representative. Uh, let me just sort of explain how that's going to uh, how it's going to work. Basically, uh, what we're doing uh, is that we're talking to foundations here locally. And uh, UofL Peace is going to help provide uh, these, the, the, the personnel and costs to provide those mental health counselors. Then uh, through uh, very strong uh, relationships we have, and we got pretty good commitments thus far uh, from a foundation to help provide money, initially get this thing going. And then when it comes to the spring, as, as I mentioned, I'm going to introduce a bill. We're going to basically uh, help complete the funding of this next year. And then in addition to that, set things up for for full implementation and full funding the following, which is the second half of our, our fiscal year. You have a call center already? I'm sorry? You have a call center already? Uh, this is a, this is UofL Peace. The, they, will, they will be providing that. And it's not really a call center, um, but it's going to be mental health professionals that will provide this. Martha, do you want to explain? Well, so through the smartphone and through the, uh, as we work with uh, University of Utah and building the app for Kentucky, we would have uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a licensed therapist on the other end to answer the, the calls or texts or chats coming in. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Well, very good. That's uh, it's an exciting it's a topic, and I know it's been out there for a while, so I appreciate uh, you all bringing light to this, and uh, hopefully we'll see some legislation moving in the upcoming uh, well, thank you. And, I, and I, I want to compliment just uh, this call out um, uh, Utah and Rachel and her group. Uh, they've been very, very instrumental. They're going to basically walk, hold our hands and walk this whole thing through so we can make sure we have the best service out there as possible. So we're really excited about this. Once again, this is a life saving measure. Um, mental, it starts with mental health. Uh, and to prevent any type of suicide uh, issues, depression, anxiety for the kids. It's all about the kids, the parents, and the teachers to make sure we take a holistic approach to make sure we elevate everybody's mental health. And Chairwoman Moser was just mentioning we, you know, we fund poison control centers uh, in this state uh, through Norton's, I think, for, and that's in our budget every year, and I think it's something we need to start considering uh, also yeah. on this topic moving forward. All right. Um, Thank yeah, you, Rachel. And, and, and the other the other question that I think also needs people, you know, 
988 is a new number we've got for mental health. Uh, does this tie into that at all? I mean, as far as an opportunity, or is it going to be completely separate? Or has there been discussions about that? There has been discussions about it. We'll continue to talk about it, but it's going to augment it. It's going to complement that, what, the, what they're doing. Uh, I know the uh, well, Senator Wise uh, was here, but, you know, there's a bill we passed several years ago, the School Res Re Re Resiliency Safety Act. In there, in one of the sections, it, it talked about using different tools. One of those different tools that's mentioned is mobile. And this is what this, what this falls into the, uh, in the play and so forth. So I really think, uh, I really think it's going to be um, a, a very much of a complementary. In fact, it's going to enhance because remember 988 in a tough situation or remember the, uh, the suicide line? It's hard to remember those numbers. All you got to do is... Look at your phone, and you hit it, and you're gone talking to somebody. That's what it, that's what it takes. It's an easy access.